Mars. I'm Dr. Phil Wu. Uh, I'm a physician with Kaiser Permanente and a uh, co-chair of our community health initiative. Many of you may know that Kaiser is a uh, healthcare provider in the Portland area. I'm also on the board of Upstream Public Health, which is a statewide uh, public health advocacy organization. So I can say that uh, to you all today that both organizations, Upstream Public Health and Kaiser Permanente, strongly support this uh, transfer uh, policy. Uh, we feel this is uh, a very important, significant step in increasing and maintaining access to public transportation for low-income and underserved populations. Um, I probably can't say anything more eloquently than what people have said up until this point, but I did want to at least reinforce a couple of principles of um, healthy, equitable transportation policy. Uh, these aren't principles that I created. Uh, many of you know these principles already. Uh, these principles were crafted by uh, reputable organizations, including the Center for Disease Control, Policy Link, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and others. But some of these policies include supporting accessible, efficient, affordable, and safe alternatives to car travel. I think we all buy into that. It improves health, uh, expands access to opportunity, and mitigates climate change. It's important to recognize that maintaining access to employment and income is a major factor in maintaining health. Not only that, but access to other kinds of opportunities, including social, recreational, and as you've heard earlier today, health care is critical in maintaining health. Transportation policies that are equitable maintain access to healthy food, which is a major health issue. And then finally, as you've heard quite a lot today, representation in the decision-making process is an important part of equitable transportation policy. So I wanted to focus a little bit on the issue of, of health, both from my hat as uh, a board member of Upstream, but also as a physician with Kaiser Permanente. I want to quote the World Health Organization. Quote, health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And so what you've been hearing today is a commentary that speaks to the social aspect of health and it's a very important one. But we also know what the direct health benefits are, physical activity. For many low-income and underserved populations, the walking that's associated with their public transit use may be their only form of physical activity. And for many of these, this will in fact satisfy the physical activity recommendations of the Center for Disease Control. So the impact on physical health can be enormous. Another direct health benefit is mental health. We all get stressed out when we're in long commutes, in a car or by any other mode. A difficult, frustrating commute on a bus is equally stressful and affects mental health. Pollution. We know that asthma rates are directly correlated with air pollution. And this may be one of the most under-recognized reasons why low-income African American and Latino populations have higher asthma rates than everyone else. So reducing vehicle miles traveled in difficult communities may have a very significant impact on disease rates. So for all of these reasons, Upstream and Kaiser Permanente would strongly encourage the TriMet Board to take a stand and make commitments to serving low-income and underserved populations through this policy change. Thanks very much.